Um, right on. Thanks for coming out, and thanks for these guys for hosting this event. And to Garrett, uh, my, my longtime friend and distributor in Canada. And uh, let's see. It was they asked us to do some kind of exhibit up here, and Garrett suggested we do like a history of the company. And I really wasn't that interested in doing something like that. Uh, ever, but I thought with the recent change of the company of uh, taking our name off the clothing and the labels and completely changing the direction of the company, I thought it'd be uh, a good moment to uh, actually bring closure to 21 years of one chapter of this company and um, move on to the next. And another thing is I'm, I'm, I'm really into reading and stories and people's uh, you know, reading about people's human stories and stuff. So um, I call this a reading, although uh, I'll probably talk ad lib, maybe read a couple things out of out of this fanzine, which we made 117 of them, a uh, special edition for tonight, along with this limited edition uh, T-shirt that they're selling uh, at the at the bar over there. And um, yeah, so. The idea I came up with was, uh, what a long, strange trip it's been, a 21-year dysfunctional history of my life with Fresh Jive. Um, because it's been a lot of ups and downs, and uh, people think it's real glamorous, but uh, uh, sometimes, most of the time, it's not. So um, hopefully, oh, do we have the fancies to pass out? Yeah, we'll get they're at the door. Hopefully later, you guys can pick up a fanzine like, and, and read the 21 stories. They're pretty in-depth and a lot more details than I'm going to talk about. Uh, right on. So, um, and the 21 stories relate to 21 pieces here that I'm exhibiting. And um, another thing is, uh, I, I look back on 21 years and I don't think of the clothing. I don't think of... Oh yeah, we did that wonderful jacket design. It's like, you know, a big deal. Um, but what I think is the journey and all the, the trials and tribulations that went along with it and what was behind the scenes with uh, some of these things that we produced for the company. And I think that's, that's a more interesting uh, history to me than anything, you know, we physically made. All right, so um, I'll try to add live now. So, um, let me see. The first chapter is called California Uberalis. And uh, I grew up in Los Angeles, California. And um, let's see. Uh, so um, I grew up in California. The punk rock scene was, was pretty important to me when I was in junior high school. Uh, it kind of got me into a lot of different forms of culture and also being in junior high at that age, you know, like, we take for granted today the things uh, we wear and do, you know, we've got short buzzed hair, dyed hair, earrings, uh, all that nipple rings, whatever you guys got, but uh, back then, to have a buzz cut and to have narrow jeans and high top converse, it was dangerous, you'd get your ass kicked going to school. So, um, I got into punk rock because I just thought the music was really exciting, the whole scene, and it was dangerous, you know. I wasn't pissed off, but the fucking community at large uh, made me pissed after that, because I got into this culture, I went to school, uh, dressed this way, and all of a sudden everybody would spit on me and kick my ass for dressing that way, you know, call me a faggot, and, you know, all that crap. So um, that's kind of what I went through, but I wouldn't change it for a thing, because uh, I really... I learned a, a valuable lesson from that and realized that, you know, what's important is individuality and creativity and all that shit. Um, so, now, and when I was 14, I was getting pretty creative. Uh, when you were a 14-year-old 14 punk, 14 punk rocker, you had to get a leather jacket. It was like, you know, it was like you're in rap and you, you have to have that Cadillac Escalade two years ago, you know. When you're a punk rocker, you have to have a fucking leather jacket. And everybody painted their favorite bands and stuff on, on their leather jacket. So that's what I used to do. I used to paint everybody's leather jacket. This was mine. I still own it. I painted this in 1981 when I was 14. And uh, so it's kind of a little hint of I was kind of into street culture and style from 
from, from that period. And in that period, there was no brands you wore, you know? Street style at that age was what you saw, um, you know, uh, in the scene or a skateboarder wear or, or your favorite singer wear, you know? I remember when I was 13, you know, one of my favorite skaters was wearing a red crew neck sweatshirt, no logos on it. And it's like, damn, all of us had to have a red crew neck sweatshirt. <laughs> Sure, it works the same way with you know 14 year olds and stuff. So that's a little back history, and then um, move on to when I started the company. Uh, let's see, no better time than the present. During the summer break in '89, between junior and senior year at art school, I wanted to start my own project. I, I was big into skating, snowboarding, surfing. I put in a few years work as a muralist and a set decorator at underground clubs, rap music was a big influence, hitting hard at the time, NWA, Public Enemy, it hit the charts with Tone Loke and Young MC, taking it way back here. Uh, these guys are on a label called Delicious Vinyl, I got a job there, I uh, learned how to use the Macintosh uh, my last year in college, so I was really involved in the kind of like the underground nightlife scene, uh, along with, you know, some action sports. Uh, and so I knew a lot of people and stuff, and the point is, is there less stuff going on when I start, wanted to start the clothing company. Um, wasn't much of a concept, I just wanted to do this clothing company. I was really ambitious, and uh, that reflected everything I was into. It wasn't something planned, you know. Um, in my senior year of, of college, I had a senior graphic design class, and the assignment was to do agit prop posters. So I, I already came up with the term jive, which turned into friend job, fresh guy very soon for trademark reasons. And all I did were these four graphics, kind of a double take. And you saw this along the street, you know, you look up and you're like, oh, oh my god, that's a giant walk in. So it was just it was just a way to catch your attention via parodies and logos. So um, that was the first of it. 